Okay, Jay, you're live on YouTube whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, welcome to this virtual meeting of the EDEI scrutiny panel. Can I remind all participants that normal rules of procedure apply? For example, comments and questions need to be put through the chair. As we are meeting virtually, the proceedings may, may take slightly longer, so your patience is appreciated. Whilst members of, you, uh, of, of the public can view this meeting on YouTube live, they will not be able to actively participate, they will not be actively able to comment on proceedings. Uh, as this meeting is being live streamed, can I remind all participants that their conduct should should re reflect this? Um, so the first agenda item is apologies for absence. Uh, do we have any, uh, Sue, sorry? Uh, no apologies, they've been submitted. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, and welcome to Councillor John Hobson, who takes the place of Councillor David Coop. Welcome, John. Thank you. Second uh, general item uh, is declarations of interest. Uh, do we have any declarations? I'm just looking now for hands. I can't see any hands, so that's fine. We'll move on. Uh, the third agenda item is the minutes of the last meeting on the 9th of March. Um, I'll take them as being read unless there's anyone uh, who wants to make any comments or objections. I'm looking again for hands. I can't see there's anyone. Anyone want, want to comment on that? So we'll we'll take them as being read and, and correct. Um, the fourth agenda item is the green strategy uh, draft final report. Um, I just I, I want to comment on on the fact that this meeting is slightly unusual. We we did have agenda items that we've had to cancel um, a bit last minute, but in in a bizarre way, it's kind of um, it's kind of a, a, a positive outcome because we can focus on on our draft final report. And when I was previously just a member of, of this committee, I didn't really appreciate the process of scrutiny properly. Being the chair and, and seeing how we, we go from um, uh, a monthly meeting um, that, that culminates in a report that goes to the, to, that goes to the executive to try and actually challenge or change um, policy that that's what that's what that's what, what we're going to be focusing on today so um over the past uh, year we've had the green uh, the green strategy um review and i think all members have been emailed out um a list of uh conclusions from from that what i'm going to quickly do just to recap for for members watching and for members present are the terms of references because we got three terms of references um terms of reference a um is to examine the council's proposals to make government targets for greenhouse gas emissions, make Middlesbrough more climate resilient and minimise the environmental impact on services. Uh, the second term of reference is, uh, is to investigate in detail the following elements of Middlesbrough Council's Green Strategy Action Plan and its land use and wildlife, culture and communities and su sustainable transport. And finally, the third term of reference is to identify and investigate examples of best practice that can be adopted in Middlesbrough. So I think over the span of, of the past year where, where we've had, for example, um, um, council officers from Sheffield and West Bromwich, and we've had our own council officers, uh, we've managed to, to um, actually consider all of those topics, uh, I, I would say in a relatively short period of time. Uh, the only topic I, I think that has been lacking because of cancellations was the city fiver review um, in regards to broadband. But actually, I'm saying I don't think actually that necessarily comes under the green strategy, so I'm I'm probably incorrect there. But what we now need to do in 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 term in terms of those references is to come up with a set of uh, recommendations to put forward to executive. So I do have a, a list of recommendations that have been fed through from members um, of this panel, some members, um, and then. What I want to do is open it up to to all members to sort of ha to to input now um, any recommendations we can put forward to the executive, and um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in relation to the meetings that we've had. Even if there's anything that that you you, you want to openly discuss now, I think it, it's just a good a good opportunity for for us to to have an open discussion. So. I'll open it up to members. Is there anyone um, who wants to put recommendations forward? Councillor Branson? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm not sure whether I passed this recommendation on to you at some time ago now, um, but um, it relates to, obviously to my interest, which is uh, public transport. Um, and you mentioned it, it here in terms of 
reference B at the end, that the introduction of, of, of measures such as the um, uh, bus service improvement partnership and the uh, and the infrastructure plan will aid uh, more sustainable travel. My my own concern here is that that on its own will not suffice. Uh, and the main reason for that is that I, I'm sure we're all aware um, that with the ending of the uh, subsidy to bus companies, which I think is due to kick in now, that bus companies are talking about reducing services, never mind maintaining the existing services they have at the moment. And I think we need to take a more proactive role. And, and of course, you'll remember that that was the very point I put to the mayor at the, meet the council meeting a couple of days ago. So I, I would like to expand on that uh, 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 conclusion under 74. I think it's important that we press the TVCA um, to look for further funding that will enable us to increase the number or at least maintain the number of bus at present bus services route. Because in all honesty, it doesn't matter whether you have green buses or whether you have accelerated routes or whether you have fancy signs, if you don't have the buses, then you haven't got a sustain sustainable public transport system. And I fear that's what we're heading to. Thank you, Councillor Branson. Uh, it's interesting, I don't know if you saw the uh, announcement yesterday by um, Ben Houchin uh, in regards to uh, quite a bit of, of additional funding uh, for, for, for specifically <coughs> For bus routes and bus shelters and things like that, um, I think me and you have always been of, of the same mind in terms of the council as an entity is relatively powerless, and it is the TBCA who, who got the actual power. Um, so I think what you try to say is the council should adopt a, a policy of, well, I, I'm assuming it already does, but effectively a policy of, um, of, uh, I'm trying not to stammer here. Apologise, but. <laughs> A, a, a policy of um, can, 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 I'm really sorry, I've got a slight stammer which is going on. A, a policy of basically um, getting in touch with the TVCA, the, the TVCA on a regular basis to um, actually invest in, in, in bus routes. But I, I don't know if you, if you want to refine what what you were saying there, David, so we, we could put it forward as a recommendation because I might, I might be Getting, getting what you said wrong. Um, no, no, I, I think I think that's right. I think there's a couple of things. First of all, that we should press the TBCA uh, to provide as much funding as possible in order to maintain and, if possible, extend existing bus routes. Yeah. And secondly, which links into this, that the TBCA should uh, work with the various planning departments in the local councils to ensure that bus routes are provided when new housing development is set up. Now, I know that's something that David Cook was very concerned about because, of course, um, he has the Hemlington Grange development, which at the moment has no bus service, and he's very concerned that it will not have a bus service. And one of the things that we pressed was that, uh, that, that Stagecoach and the TBCA should, uh, uh, should uh, Co cooperate with local councils, planning departments to make sure that bus routes were set up when new housing developments were put in place. Uh, does that seem clear enough or do you want me to make it that, more specific? That, that's great, David, thank you. And that definitely fits in with term, term of reference B uh, um, under sustainable transport. I think uh, that's a very valid recommendation to take forward. Thank if you. If you could put that in under 74, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mawson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the just regarding David's last comments, I agree fully with them. Um, as we stand, we're a toothless tiger against the private bus companies, um, and that the TVCA and all of the local authorities must work closely together to, to create a, a united front. Excuse me, united front on this subject. It's a very important one. And it's a major part of our strategy. Um, what I was going to comment on is the um, in seventy four as well about the um, electric vehicle charging points. I'm still unhappy about the response we got about these at the last last meeting we had. Um, there's still no 
surefire system, there's still lots of problems with charging points. They're unreliable. We need more confirmation of the, the sustainability of the charging points. Um, and that, that's got to be kept in the forefront. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I think that the, the charging point is an interesting comment because one of the recommendations I've got here is uh, through the planning process, encourage um, it, encourage d d d developers to include electric vehicle charging points in yeah. new housing in, in new houses, housing or or commercial developments. So I think um, that's a recommendation that I've got. But your concern is about the, the sustainability of those charging points. Uh, I.e., like, are they, are they going to become <coughs> quickly? Is, is that right, Councillor Morstan? Yes, we we've seen reports, news reports about uh, points not working or or being totally unreliable. And until they've got a very reliable system, we it won't work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Furness. That's, uh, sorry, Theo, you, you're, you're mute. Sorry. Yes, my apologies. Yeah, um, on the point of the charging points, I've been speaking to the officer Chris R about it because um, there's a car park in my ward which is council owned. And I, 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 like I said, it should be part of the. Um, because they're, they're going to roll out for certain areas. They said Stewart Park will get some possibility of other council owned areas will get some. And he informed me that Bing's car park in Linford will be getting some electrical charging points through the TVCA. Um, and so obviously they're, they're the ones who are rolling out a strategy of part funding. I think they're going to be privately run, you know, by, I don't know, because there's a few operators out there, Podpoint, Rapid Charge. But I think the TVCA are like help subsidising them. Um, so again, we have to go through the TVCA, don't we? They're, they're the ones providing the money. Um, so it will be a point of, you know, we do our best to make sure that the TVCA do, you know, provide the money or at least I'll maybe the council provide in the planning where any new sites that gets development, you know, like new rows of shops, maybe there should be some plugging points, you know, incorporated into that because the future of like electric charge and not everyone has off street parking and but everyone can go everyone goes to the shops or places and that's the only way they can drive the car in the future because you have to sit and wait for half an hour at least to get a decent amount of charge you can't just go up and charge in two three minutes like you can obviously when you're fueling up um but yeah i think just make sure that accounts have a plan and procedures in place and um this, we obviously work with the tvca make sure that the funding does come through if it needs to be subsidised. Thank you, Councillor Furness. Uh, no, I think, um, I think is it 2030 all new uh, vehicles have to be electric and we are moving to a low carbon economy. Um, it's one of those uh, items that there are risks of, uh, uh, in terms of the infrastructure being changed along, along the way, but all local authorities um, do have to be proactive, I think, uh, just just in terms of the planning element of it. So, yeah, thank you, Councillor Furness. Uh, Councillor Arundale. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Branson, I fully understand you are passionate about providing uh, public transport, but in all honesty, you're, you're swimming against the tide. How on earth are you going to convince people to um, to use public transport when you can walk out, jump in a car, and go from A to B? Um, and it, that's the problem. <coughs> Things have changed since the 1950s and 60s when everybody used the buses. Everybody's got cars now. And it's so much more convenient. In fact, it's even cheaper if there's a few of you to get a taxi into the town and you're from A to B, you know, without any stops and what have you. I don't know how you'll get over this, to be quite honest, um, but I do understand uh, what you're saying. And uh, like I say, I don't know how we'll solve it, to be quite honest. Um, I, I, last Saturday morning, I, I catch, went to catch the bus into the into the town from where I live, and um, I had to wait for over half an hour for a bus that normally runs every twelve minutes. And uh, when I got on, I said, "What's happening?" He said, "Oh, well, we've changed the, uh, the timings. This is on a Saturday morning, which you'd expect to be quite busy, but 
this wasn't particularly full. Uh, did pick some people on road, but uh, yeah, it was very inconvenient compared to uh, jumping in the car. So I don't know how you get over that, to be quite honest. Thank you. Yeah, I can see you, you'd like to reply, Councillor Branson. Just very simple. There we are. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, just very simply, um, not everybody, of course, has access to a car. Uh, that's worth bearing in mind. Young people, of course, can't drive uh, under a certain age. Um, and also, not all families have access to two cars. Um, it's, it's quite often that one person has to use the car and the other doesn't. So there are real issues. Yes, it's not easy, Ron. You're, you're absolutely right. The world has changed since the 1950s. <laughs> And I quite understand that, and it's not an easy topic, but I have a horrible feeling that if we don't fight on this issue, we're going to have a, a public transport system, which is virtually non-existent, and in which a lot of people get trapped in their houses because they can't actually get a, 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 a way of traveling, uh, except by using taxi, and that may be unaffordable. Remember that uh, people who get older may be unable to drive for health reasons. Um, so you've got a, a whole number of people here who at some stage or other are going to be unable to easily move around. Um, so I think we've got to take that into consideration and we've got to accept there is a cost and I don't doubt that there is a cost there. And I think as a local authority, we have to fight that corner. It's not easy, but I think we have to do it. I don't think we're going to get back the perfect system that we had in the 60s or 70s. I'm, I'm sure we won't, but at least we want to make sure that it isn't whittled away completely. Uh, and I, and I that think that's really what I'm getting at. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I go too much between um, you two, but it's an interesting conversation. Uh, I can see your hands up, Ron. Um, are, are you willing to come back on that? Yes, yes. Um, we've spoken about this before, David and I, and um, for me, the only way this, for this to go forward is, is for a legislation where um car users are taxed to pay for to subsidize the bus service and and i haven't got anything against that but unfortunately <laughs> it's, unpal it's unpalatable politically you know um you know uh, people i'm afraid people are rather selfish and they don't like paying up for anything if they're not going to use it but um that's the answer as well as i'm sure david agrees with that that the answer is that car users um are taxed uh, um, to pay for Service, bus services. Whether that will ever be politically palatable, I don't know, to be quite honest. There you go. We shall see. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Saunders? Yeah, I just, I just have to follow up what uh, Councillor Saunders just said there. Uh, first, I think uh, car users' motorists are absolutely crippled enough with, with uh, the expensive uh, running of cars, whether it's Electric yeah, car tax, insurance, petrol, as you know. So I think that one will go down like a lead balloon, but there you go. Uh, I just getting back to the bus service. I mean, a long, long time ago, when I was 18, I worked, I had a short while, worked for Cleveland Transit, was which was totally subsidised by the council. Um, and I think until the authorities in Teesside get together, and look for money, as you say, David, you're right. But until it's a total subsidy of these two private firms, because we've got Stagecoach and Arriva, which are really, you know, they're out to make a profit. Let's not, they're not here. They are for the public to a certain degree, but they need to make money to operate. And until the authorities get together and look at a possibility of a full subsidised bus service, I think, you know, as you say, it will be a hard day. Uh, a subject to keep looking at. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I'm just reading now, and uh, the announcement yesterday was uh, as part of a £310 million package that the the, TBS, the, the TVC have received. Uh, £71.2 million is being spent on bus improvements. Um, most of it does seem to be Middlesbrough. Um, but I think part of the problem is that you don't know how long that, that money is going to last and how far it will stretch. Um, I know the uh, Millsborough Council used to subsidise bus companies, I think, to the tune of a few hundred thousand pounds a year back back in two 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 
back in around 2010. So, yeah, I think that that's probably the concern is about how long that, that it's going to last. Um, are there any other comments from members? Any other recommendations? Um, w one recommendation um, I've seen is to explore the potential for a permanent structure modelled on the West the, the West Brom Outdoor Market Project, um, um, essentially within Captain Cook Square, potentially, um, where, you've, where you've got a future where we're going to have um, a combination of leisure and retail. Um, from the presentation by that council officer, it seemed that it was a different type of, of sustainable retail uh that that would complement the the major retailers that already exist so i don't know how members feel about that it was it was basically an outdoor solar powered market uh, it seemed quite interesting but again I, I, is there any comments from members in terms of that recommendation for the executive to consider um any thoughts no <laughs> sorry so uh, uh, sorry councillor arendale yeah, yeah. Obviously, this has got a tie in. If you're talking about using Captain Cook Square for this, or, or that's been mentioned, this will have to tie. Have to tie that in with Richard Horniman and what you know, what he's thinking to do with that 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 site. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the whole thing. You know, we, we've got to work as a whole thing. You know, I mean, it seems to be a good idea, but um, without talking to him and 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 saying, you know, what do you think and is it viable and what have you? Yeah. So that's where I feel that it should, we should go. We should talk with Richard Horniman and see what he feels about it. Yeah, I can see Richard put his hand up. Uh, are you all right to come in, Richard? Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. Um, thanks for that, Ron. More than happy for us to look at it because there are a number of things that we are doing in the town, whether it be Captain Cook Square, um, the stuff that we're potentially looking at for, for some of the other properties, and then maybe it's even the old town hall over at Middlehaven where there might be some potential for this. So more than happy to look at it. That's brilliant. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mawson. Thanks, Chair. It was just to comment, don't throw it out with the bathwater, that idea. Have it looked at first. Thanks very much. Yeah. Councillor Hubbard. Thanks, Chair. Just on a, uh, relating to another issue on item 30, uh, the rethinking of urban grasslands says the council has adopted a regime that includes cutting less cutting less often and seeding more wildflower meadows grasslands and highway verges um, at our meeting that we discussed this i was led to believe that we were going to maybe look at leaving more of the wider open verge uh, areas uh, leaving them standing <coughs> and it was going to be a pilot scheme so i would like just to ask if this new cutting regime has been uh, run past 13 housing because we already understand that they're out of step and 13 does do more cutting regimes than the council present. So if the council are going to leave, um, let well, cut less, it's going to be more apparent um, to the council. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, uh, Jeff. I can see your hands up. You're ready to come in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank, thanks for that, Council Hubbard. Really good point uh, that that you made. And yes, we absolutely want to change our cutting regime where it's appropriate to do so. And we are expanding that this year. Uh, and I'll get the teams to email councillors where that's happening, so you're aware where it's happening. In terms of the work with thirteen, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're very much on board with the sowing of wildflowers and things like that. We work in strong partnership with them. And we absolutely will continue our discussions with them about cutting regimes and things like that. But we're just about to bring to exec our year two uh, green strategy actions for this year, which will incorporate those types of things. But it, it's absolutely the right question to ask. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, Scott, could I ask, uh, there is a list of recommendations. Are you, are you all right to, to have them put on the screen, please, if that's uh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just think it will like help us discuss the the, the recommendations or, the, or the, the the draft of recommendations a bit better. So um, we've explored the first one there about the um, outdoor market potentially. Um, the second recommendation or um, draft direct, drafted 
recommendation is that Middlesbrough Council should liaise with Sheffield Council regarding their Great Green strategy, ensure the Council's sustain, sustainable urban drainage system SUDS so uh, guide identifies appropriate uh, appropriate species of plant that are attractive, low maintenance. Um, well, I, 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 I apologise, panel members. I, I, I'm assuming you, you, you all can read that okay. Um, I think. I don't think there's anything too controversial with that because what I remember the um, the council officer um, said that uh, the, 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 at least the consultant that they used at the time they were able to um, have, have his services effectively for for free and, and we we we've, we've discussed this after the meeting as well and it looks like that is possible so I, I don't know if any panel members have got any sort of comments or, or questions on. Chef, but again, I, I think you've got to be careful because what, what works in Sheffield doesn't necessarily work in Middlesbrough, of course. But is there any comments? Or um, I can't see everyone, unfortunately. Um, let me have a quick. Um, is it any any comments or questions from panel members on that? Or, or as we're scrolling through these recommendations, um, if anyone wants to come in, I think we've covered we've covered most of them, or at least some of them. Um, the the charging points, for example, we've covered that. Um, wash in in. In, introduce a wash, squash, and recycle campaign to reduce the level and volume of con. con I'm so sorry. It, it to to uh, reduce the, the the volume of contact contaminated items currently collected from from recycle bins and improve current recycle rates. Um, I think was it Councillor Arendale who put that forward. Um, I, I don't know if, if you want to say anything on that, Councillor. Um, yes, Chair. Um, yeah, I submitted that suggestion some time ago, um, and I'm pleased to say that it's been been listened to. But apparently, I've been told this morning by by so that uh, this is something that's happening elsewhere in the country. It's not just here, and I didn't realise that. I just, you just what it is when I've walked past. You know, recycling bins, and you see them with the lid stuck up in the air because of the fault of the top and past past that. And quite often, you'll see um, plastic milk, um, two litre milk cartons there, not being washed out, not being squashed down. So they're just taking loads and loads of space. And what that means is that the wagons will pick all that up, fill up, they've got to go away and empty it and come back. So they're making more trips than is necessary. You know. Um, so that was my thinking about it, and I'm pleased to say it's in there. Um, going back to the other stuff with sustainable planting, we've got to be careful we don't go down the route of putting stuff in, which in the past has been a litter gathering. I mean, we've taken some out in places where we've had beds um, with, with, with um, plants in, uh, which, which are perennials, uh, and what they've turned out to be, they've turned out to be uh, litter gathering places. So, yeah. By all means, look to diversify away from just grass everywhere. But uh, if we put these things in, we've got to be mindful that we don't go back to that where we put um, plants in that that, that, that that gather litter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Ferris, I can see your hands up as well. Yeah, just regarding the um, recycling, I always thought the council, because it's people, not, not a lot of people <laughs> like the process of recycling. Um, so maybe like I always thought they should like have some like even if it's just a short video that could be put out on you know the council uh, social media and obviously by other councillors showing the process like from going into the bin you know from the guys picking it up putting it in the wagon taking it to the recycle centre then the process it goes through to get you know like sorted because you know like sometimes it's people handballing it you know they have to pick out the items. Um, you know, to separate it, or there might be machines. And I, I don't know, I always think like those type of videos might give a bit more insight and, you know, we run it through schools and there could be a bit more interest in that way. So I know my, my son, we have a book and it, it goes through like a recycling plant and it shows like the, all, every process. And I don't know, I think it, it would be more of a visual way of like teaching. Um, I know they have done in schools where, you know, got kids to like pick up bottles and, you know, the recycling of that, but. I, don't, I think if we try and get some type of video put out there as well, I think that would be a great idea. And I think even simple things like stickers on bins. I remember, I had, well, I had an old sticker on my bin, but it's washed off now. Um, just reapply those stickers where it says, you know, no um, milk bottle cartons, like they're not recyclable. No, you know, pizza boxes, 
that's probably the main offender, you know, contaminating bins. Um, I think just it's just constant, and obviously, yeah, just saying if you can squash it down, if it's a bottle, squeeze the air out, put the lid back on, and then that keeps it smaller. Or if it's can squash it down rather than leaving it big. So I think it's just the general strategy needs to be improved um, across the town for that. <coughs> and then the point on um, was it the planting? Yeah, obviously low maintenance is. There's never no maintenance on any type of wildlife planting. Trees, you have to be cut, have to be maintained. Plants, like if you just leave, like Ron said, if you put plants in, they're naturally going to attract blown in litter. So you need to go through that and clear them from time to time. And even perennial plants, they need to be separated or they'll overgrow, you know, they'll take over certain parts. So um, I definitely agree there's certain areas of the town where there's little triangles of grass that need to be separately cut by an individual with a petrol lawnmower, rather than, you know, it'd be so much easier if it was just planted or maybe landscaped in a different way where it might only be once a year, somebody comes and let it fix and takes all the rubbish out rather than, you know, every month someone comes with a lawnmower to cut the grass. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Uh, Jeff, I can see your hands up from that as well, if you want to come in. Yeah, just, just two things there. Uh, one is some really interesting suggestions there about environmental education. We do have a dedicated environmental education officer who you might have seen has been posting quite a lot of videos on the Middlesbrough Council uh, website and uh, and other places. Uh, so I'll pass that those ideas on about the, the kind of the whole journey of recycling products and maybe we can do something uh, on that. That, that. That's absolutely fine. And yes, absolutely, you know, as you say, Low maintenance isn't no maintenance, and we will ensure that we keep those spaces clean as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Saunders, I saw your hand go up and then go down. Are you want to come in? Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, Jeff's just answered it really, but I, I was just going to say I'd support what uh, Councillor Arundale and Fence has said that about, you know, these, you know, less uh, cotton and meadows and, and wildflowers. Obviously, Yes, they look pretty, but they still need maintained to a certain degree. And obviously, the litter picks and the the, the maintenance of them, of them uh, beds and and meadows that really need to be looked at. Well, as I say, Jeff's just Jeff's just uh, said it there. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. I think Branson was next, and then Councillor Arundel. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um... It's issue relating to uh, the cycling, um, the signage and information boards for cycle routes. Two things we should think about. Um, firstly, whether we should have a map that is available for, color, for that, that people can uh, either ask for or is available at the town hall, or put a map onto um, uh, the uh, digitally so that it can be downloaded onto your phone. Uh, that would be quite useful. So that people know uh, in in advance what, what the actual uh, cycle routes are through the town. Um, so that's basically it. Thank, thank you, Councillor Branson. Uh, Councillor Arundel. Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, I like to go to item G, right? Um, I would I would like to see all elected members uh, and and some staff, if physically able to get themselves involved with local volunteering groups that, that, that work on, on, on the green areas in the town. You know, um, I've been doing it for 10 years or more down in Bluebell Beck. Um, it's a good, you know, it's a good social thing, quite apart from anything else, but it also, you know, it, it saves the council money um, and it provides a, 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 a nice facility. You know, I mean, it's a lovely walk along the Bluebell Beck and we put seats in and sculptures and all sorts of stuff, you know. I go, you can go from Mandale right the way through to Low Lane. It's lovely, um, but it needs people to to get involved. You know, uh, just as I say, if they're capable to do it, some or some aren't. But um, and I'm getting a bit more of a struggle to be quite honest. But uh, but yeah, I'd like to see uh, elected members and, and and some of the staff encouraged to 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 join in with these activities and show support for them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I, there's definitely been a strong growth of those groups as well. In the social media, uh, obviously, is quite a visible, uh, a visible thing where a lot of uh, 
I, I feel like a lot of councils have jumped on on with, with activities, but there's nothing. I don't. I don't. I don't think there's any harm in just encouraging uh, council members and officers to to to, to get involved. Uh, Councillor Marston. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Chair. Just back to uh, Council Branson's comments on cycle paths. Um, one problem on cycle paths, those away from main roads, is um, debris, broken glass, etc. I think uh, including the increase in cycle paths should be a, a cleansing regime, an inspection regime. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um... I'm just getting that back up, Scott. If you could um, go just a bit up, I, I don't know whether this. I know, I know. When I was reading and stammering, I was kind of uh, wanting to go down a bit, but I think that's pretty much all of the um, the recommendations. That yeah, I, I'm I'm not aware that there's anything <laughs> that we haven't covered. Um, so we've. I know Sue has been making a note of all the comments, and what we'll be doing now is, I think, coming back with uh, well, finishing the report for OSB. For executive, um, just before I finish this section, though, is there any final comments from members on any of the? I'm sorry, Sue. Yeah. Yeah, Chair. I was just going to suggest that I've, uh, as you say, I've made a note of the comments this morning, so I'm going to go back and amend the report, and um, particularly around the bus services, the electric vehicle charging points, and um, the comment about the digital map on the cycling. Um, and also that encouraging more elected members and staff to get involved in the green um, initiatives. I think they were the main points. So what I was going to suggest to do is go back, make those amendments to the report and the recommendations, and then I'll um, send a final copy around the panel, see if there are any more comments, and if not, we'll we'll take that as ready to submit to um, OSB, if everybody's happy with that suggestion. Thanks, Chair. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Councillor Branson, sorry, your hand was up. Are you, are you uh, want to come in? I, I think the point was answered. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. So um, the next meeting will obviously, I think, be after the AGM, um, I believe. Uh, so we'll we'll have a, the final report with the recommendations um, in May time, and then from that presented to OSB. Um, I, I would like to thank Sue massively for the, the past year in terms of organising meetings, getting members to come along. I know like anyone who's been a chair before, you don't realise how much work goes in by offices and, and the report as well. So thank you very much for the past year, Sue. It's, it's been really good. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is the overview scrutiny board update. And I've got a, a quick update. Um, Apologies, at least I've got it somewhere. There we go. So, uh, the overview and scrutiny board met on the 23rd of March, uh, 2022. Uh, the board was given an executive member update from Councillor Barry Cooper, which was a brief financial update of the council. Uh, of the council. Uh, but the focus from members was on the lack of executive member reports, which has been noted by the, the monitoring officer. Um, the board then had an update from the chief executive of the council, which mainly focused on school, school exclusion levels in the town when compared to similar uh, local authorities. Our percentage of exclusions are generally higher than uh, both groups. Uh, sorry, when compared to similar and local authorities, I do apologize. I don't think my, my notes make entire sense uh, when I read in the back, but our percentage, uh, our percentages of exclusions are generally higher than than than, than local authorities that are in the same socio economic group um, as 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 Middlesbrough um, as what Middlesbrough is. Um, and whilst the overall figures have reduced from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one, um, they're still comparatively higher despite the the um, reduction. Um, Finally, the board had an update from the Director of Regeneration focusing on the current position of the town centre investment um, in relation to things like uh, Captain Cook Square and um, um, uh, the, the purchase of uh, the Cleveland Centre. And uh, the full meeting was live streamed and is available for members to watch on the Council's YouTube channel. And the next meeting will take place on the 27th of April. Um, is there any uh, questions or comments from members from that update? Um, Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next agenda item are any other urgent items. I'm not aware that there is any. Uh, is there anything that members want to bring up at this point? 
I can't see any hands. So uh, that is the end of the meeting, I believe. Uh, so thank you again for your attendance. I do apologise for my, my stammering. It's, it's been bad today, but thanks for your patience. And it's been a pleasure to chair this uh, over the past year. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Stefan. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye. Stefan, um, no, I just from Matt saying, obviously, 